I think we'll have a feast to celebrate. I just don't want police so coming in there, that's all. Feast. Well, you've still got that money I give you. Les! What? Will you go around and see that Roy and give him his money back? Yeah. Can we go into town later on? Not by yourselves, no. Why did you say that for? Because I want to go. So, we should have just gone now. You've asked her we can. It turned out quite Not well. till you learn to behave yourselves. But then feasts usually you can do. wait till I'm ready and then we'll all go. <laughs> so, you're going to pay him back? Look, he won't go to the police, you know. And how do you know that? Because I'll go around and see him. All right, happy. I should think he'll want more than a word from you. He'll want his money back. So what time are we going? When I'm ready. Fifty pounds, you said he'd give you. Yeah. Well, he's not going to turn his back on that, is he? I don't know if you're going to take them swimming this afternoon. Well, of course we're going swimming. It's Saturday, isn't it? We always go swimming on a Saturday, don't we? Yeah, swimming. Right, I'll have them ready for you then. <coughs> Did she find you last night? Who? Your lady friend. Only she called round at the house. She didn't. Though I don't think she will be again. Not after what I had to say to her. But she's not supposed to. But in case she didn't get the message, could you tell her you don't live there anymore? Look, I'm sorry, Sal. I didn't think she'd go round. Right, come on. You'll be seeing your daddy this afternoon. Grand little girls, aren't they? They are. Hello. Hi. Morning. Morning. So what do you think of our new neighbours, then? Well, uh, I suppose they're not the sort of family you choose to be on a desert island with. Or to live next door to, but unfortunately choice doesn't come into it. I rang the housing department. Apparently our best approach is to keep a record of their antisocial behaviour. Which, I've already started. Item number one being loud music till one o'clock this morning. I dare say you heard that. Well, no, no, I didn't, but then I'm a bit further up than you, aren't I? Oh, it comes straight through these walls. Item number two is litter. Yep, I know it doesn't seem very neighbourly, but since being pleasant it's obviously seen as a sign of weakness, what else can we do? Well, the important thing is we must stick together. Anything happens, tell me and I'll make a note of it. Right, I will. Anyway, I've got to be off. Bye. <laughs> Bye. A 56, 57, 157. So that's another three, which I'll get next week easy, and it'll be time to start packing. And it is for two people? Uh, it certainly is, uh, yes, uh, me and somebody else. Let, let me handle this. Just don't buy anything off him. Roy, mate, how are you doing? Uh, very well, thank you. You know, you caught us at a bad time the other night. Did I? I the kids were acting up. The wife weren't at her best. I mean, I've been thinking about this drill business. And I reckon you want your money back, don't you? Well, uh... Yeah, it does. Which is why I'm here. Look. There's a tenner, right? Yeah. Well, go on, pick it up. It's yours, is that? Thank you. And what about the rest? Exactly. Now, you understand, it was my youngest that nicked this drill. So, therefore, she should be the one that pays it back. I mean, it's the only way she's ever going to learn. Yes, but I'm yeah. not... No, you take that as a down payment, and our toy will be in every Saturday with, uh, well, what should we say? A five or a week till we're straight? I mean, she's only a kid. That'd be a lot for her to find. Yes, well, I, I suppose it would. Grand! Uh, no hard feelings then, eh? Uh, no. I'll be seeing you. Yes. Which leaves him with 40 quid of your money. Yeah, but look on the bright side. And what's that? Ten minutes ago, we had 50 pound of my money. Of course, you're further along the street, so they may not bother you at all. Yeah, well, not so far, no, Emily. But if they do, let us know. It'll be noted down. Yes, I will, thank you, Percy, yes. Right. Well, we'll leave you in peace. Yeah. Cheerio, night. Come on, Mr. Sugden. Bye. Right, Max will be with you in a minute, okay? Hey. 
You all right? You know I told you Steve McDonald had been locked up again? Yeah. Well, he shouldn't have been. Says you. They said the whiskey was stolen Monday evening. Yeah, so what? Monday evening, Steve was with me. Doing what? Well, I knew you'd say that. That's why I haven't told you before. Max! Man, he said doing what? Yeah, well, we know what you meant. Well, for your information, we just had a quiet drink in the flat and that was it. And that's the gospel truth, all right, okay? All right, okay. I believe you. So he couldn't have stole the whiskey, could he? Will you tell the police about this? No, I didn't want anyone to know Steve McDonald had been here. Oh. Because they'd all think the same as you're thinking, wouldn't Max, they? Max, it doesn't matter what other people think. You've got to tell them. Yeah, I suppose. See you later on. Uh, no, actually, hang on. Um, are you on your way to the station? Yeah, I am, why? Yeah? Um, could you do me a favour? Could you take Maxine with you and give her a lift? It's about Steve. You know how he was arrested? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, Maxine's got something she wants to tell them. Oh. Does she know? Steve was with me on Monday evening, therefore he couldn't have stole the whiskey. Well, uh, it's not my case. But I could introduce you to my colleague, uh, Detective Sergeant O'Grady. Are you coming now, then? Yes, she is. Come on. Come on, I can manage here. And of course, we're almost into the school holidays, so what's life going to be like then? So you're telling me it's not their house and they actually haven't bought it? No, it's the council who've bought it and who've put them in. Never mind her to live alongside them. Well, I don't mind admitting it. I don't share their interest in music. I'm very glad to hear that, Norman. With me and Mrs Bishop, people are liable to say it's because we're a couple of old fogies. Thank you. And um, you, well, being a young man, they won't say that. I won't be too sure. I know it seems terribly unneighbourly, but I just cannot live with this kind of racket. <sighs> well, I can't help thinking about just going round there and lending them a couple of my favourite CDs, so at least I can sit here and listen to music that I like. So, you're telling us now that Stephen MacDonald was with you at number two Coronation Street on Monday evening from six o'clock till gone eight? Yeah. Well, that's not quite what you said before. No, well, I got mixed up. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people do. Okay, well, uh, thanks for coming in. I mean, we certainly don't want to be holding anybody that we shouldn't. So you're going to let him go now, then? Well, we'll certainly take into account what you've told us. Right. Okay, then. Bye. Okay, bye. I think she sees herself as the star witness for the defence. She's going to be disappointed, then, isn't she? Although, uh... What? Look, we can't hold him much longer, you know. I mean, we pushed things this far. Let him go, man. Let's just hope he's got the message. Hello? Got any fags? No, I haven't. I have. Do you want one? No, thank you. What are you doing here? Would you believe I've come to see you? Look, I thought I told you that's all finished. Yes, but not for me. Right, well, you better come in. I don't want to be talking out here. You mean because she might see us? Yeah. In case the wife that I want to get back with might see us, yeah. She was living back there. Well, she is, so don't go there again, right? Well, I'm hardly liable to, am I, after the reception I got? You know, she slapped me across the face. She didn't? Oh, yeah. But that's nothing to what you're doing to me. Look, I've told you. You told me you loved me, Kevin, and I believed you. Now you're saying I can't talk to you, I can't even come near you. Look, I've got a family. I've got two little girls. You've always had two little girls. I know I have. What I don't know is how I forgot that. 
How I acted like I did. Oh, because of me. Because I put some sort of spell on you, must have been. Look, I'm not blaming you. Well, it feels like it. The only person I'm blaming is myself. Oh, thank you. Well, that makes me feel a lot better. Look, what am I supposed to say? We had an affair. And we kept saying, we kept saying all the time it wouldn't affect me marriage. Only we was wrong, weren't we? Because it has. Now I'm trying to get me marriage back together and it doesn't help with you turning up saying what you're saying. So you'd rather I went? I'd rather... Look, I'd rather things was different. Well, I'll take that as a yes. Let me know if you change your mind. You need to drink. Come on, I'll buy you one. Well, I don't know who might be in there. Well, you don't want to worry about that. Whoever they are, they've all got secrets of their own. Come on. So are you going to go and see that, Roy? I've been. What, I'm giving him his money back? Yeah. Oh, Liz, do you know I am glad? For one thing, it sets an example for girls. Can we have burgers? Yeah. How you want, love? Are you coming with us? No, I, uh, I think I'll stay here. I'll go to our lane. You know, love, I, all I want is for us to live here. We aren't all this row when we fork. I don't want to get moved on again. I couldn't stand that. Honestly, Liz, I, I just couldn't. And you won't have to. So are you coming or not? We're going now. Oh, just when I get comfortable. Oh, will you not stand there? You're in me son. I'm not in your son. Hey, what do you think you're looking at? Can you turn that thing down, please? It's deafening. No, we can't. It's our yard. If you don't stop looking, I'm going to get you down. Right, your remarks are being noted. You're a peeping Tom, that's all you are. Yeah? You dirty old devil. I'll pull your eye out next time. No. What you want to do? Tell him you'll go to the police if you don't give me some money. Yeah, I should. Anyway, we're going, aren't we? Yeah. Starving. Bet he'd pay if you did. Yep. One more week and I'll be retired. I mean, without the benefit of a decent pension. Right. Yeah. So you'll be looking for another job then? Looking, yeah, but without much hope, to be honest with you. I mean, would your firm take me on at my age? I uh, shouldn't think so, no. Yeah, and what about nursing? Am I too old for that? Oh, definitely, Ken, yeah. You could be a patient, though. You count as quite young for now, then. Yeah, well, thanks. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. You don't want to spend all afternoon listening to my problems. Mm -hmm. No, no, we don't. No. Can, can I have some arrows, please, Judy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. Two pints, palm in, over here, and be quick about it. Don't push your luck. All right? Not so bad, love, I. I'm just acting as his guide and advisor while he settles it. I shouldn't really be telling you all this, should I? Oh, get it off your chest. You'll feel the better for it. It's just that Kevin's been so kind. And, well, loving is the only word I can use. I mean, it hasn't just been me chasing him, you know. Though there's plenty around here must think so. Oh, never mind about that. I haven't had to chase him because he's wanted it to happen just as much as I have. When his wife was away, yes. But she's back now. But she doesn't want him. She's chucked him out. She hasn't chucked him very far, though, has she, hmm? No, I reckon she's still making up her mind. Donnie, we'll call Don Brennan. Living there on his own, with it? Oh, yeah, I'll add you some of the time. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't a family, was it? I mean, these golden oldies alongside us, they're probably used to having it all nice and quiet. Anyway, what happened to this Don? Oh, he got locked up after he burnt this chap's factory down. And then he tried killing his wife by drowning in her in a taxi. Mind, he weren't one for playing his music loud. You're right there. <laughs> Steve? What's happened? Oh, they've let me out. Uh, what? Oh, that's great. Tell you what, your mother and I were trying to get a solicitor for you. Yeah, well, I don't need one then. So, listen. What's the score then? They need the cell for somebody else? I mean, are they going to lift you again or what? Are you in the clear? No, I'm in the clear, yeah. They've told you that? Well, it's good, as. They didn't say sorry, though. No. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, that's good news. I've aged five years in the last two days, so... Uh... 
I don't know why, because when it came to it, they had no evidence, they had no witnesses, they had nothing. Uh, so what was it all about, then? I mean, I know they have to make it look like they've got things to do, you know, but, I mean, were you just an easy target or what? Well, I've been thinking about that. Have you eaten anyone? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing they did do was feed me. I could do with a drink, though. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll take a wee dander down the road in a wee while for a jar, right? In the meantime, I better phone your mother. She was more worried than me, so she was. I tell you what, I'd have ended up in the nick if he had his way. Who he? Alan McKenna. I'll, um, I'll tell you after you phone, Mum. Oh, Kenneth, you mind if we join you? Oh, uh, no, no, I thought I'd let him in, maybe. Uh, hello, I, I think we're disturbing you, aren't we? Uh, no, 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 really. Sit down, no. sit down. Thank you. Well, then, what about drinks? That's him, the old fella. He never, never stops complaining. Who, Percy? That's all that keeps him going. How do, Percy? Afternoon. My oldest says she caught him looking over the wall at her while she was sunbathing. Well, get your own back. You look their way when Emily's sunbathing. <laughs> oh, sir. <laughs> yes, Percy. Stephen, this is just your idea, OK? Yeah, but it's the only idea that makes any sense. Yeah, it's also an idea that might just land you up to your neck in trouble. Hiya. Hey, am I glad to see you? Well, then just tell your mother what you're thinking, all right? See what she says. What do you want to drink? A uh, glass of red, please. Right. What? Right. I wasn't pulled in because he thought I'd stolen a load of whiskey. I was pulled in because Alan McKenna is scared that I'll ruin his wedding plans. How do you make that out? Well, they had no evidence, no witnesses. All they wanted to do was bang me up for a couple of nights as a sort of warning to try and scare me away from Fiona. But it wasn't Alan who arrested you. Ah, well, that'd be tough, is. So he gets his mates to do it. I knew there was something weird going on, you know. Because they didn't question me. They didn't exactly try and get me to admit it like they would do if they were being serious. And you watch, it'll happen again. What, they'll arrest you again? Well, if they get another chance, yeah. And this is just going to go on and on, hassling me. Up until I... Well, up until I move away or something. I mean, that's what he wants. There you are. Cheers. Well, has he told you about his conspiracy theory, has he? Yeah. What do you think? Well, I think we should wait and see. And in the meantime, I reckon you should keep clear of your man, keep your ideas to yourself. That's what I reckon. But that younger girl was rude to me again in the street and for no reason at all. You should have heard what I got when I put my head over the back wall. Yes, but from what you said, that was because the older girl was sunbathing at the time and they rather misconstrued your interests. Look, we've got to be careful. It doesn't want to look as if we're provoking them. So you're saying that's what I'm doing? No, no, but, no, no. But the Battersby's might claim that. Well, somebody else can look after the diary if you don't think I'm fit. Oh, you are fit, Mr. Sutton. It's the sort of thing you do better than anybody. Definitely. Well, all right then, but I'm only carrying on if I've got everybody's support. Oh, yes. I mean, my husband always had a roving eye. Really? And I used to think, how can I compete with these other women? I mean, he sees me when I'm at home, I'm tired, I'm not my best. He only sees them when they've had two hours to get themselves all done up and they've got the energy to be amusing and seductive. Ah, uh, yeah. But now, now I'm the other woman. It's the wife I can't compete with. Oh, Natalie, come on, stop running yourself down. I can't, though. I mean, she's got everything that I haven't. She's got the kids, she's got the home, she's got all they shared together. And she knows it. She knows that she can have him come or go just as she pleases. Right, there's a little drink for you there, but you're not getting it till you both sat down at the table properly. Come on, something. The wet things here, shall I put them in the kitchen? Just put them anywhere. OK, if I make myself a coffee. Well, do you have to? It's not as if you live 50 mile away, is it? Look, what are you being like this for, Sal? I'm just trying to be as helpful as I can. Please, Kevin, not in front of the girls. I don't want to go on about it. All right. Well, can we have a word out here, please, Sal? Can I carry on like this? I just can. Natalie came round at dinner time. And I told her what I've already told her. Only this time I spelt it out. I don't want to see her again. Ever. And I told her not to come round here as well. Look, I just want to get my marriage back together. I want us to go back to being a family. Well, I'm sorry, Kevin, but that's not what I want. How can you say that? Because I can't forgive you. You think I'm going to, don't you? You think it's just a matter of keeping on at me. But I'm not. Not now and not ever. So you're going to punish them, is that what you're saying? You're going to have them grow up in a one-parent family? Oh, it's blackmail now, is it? No, but that's what you're going to do. That's what you've done. 
You were the one who didn't think about them. You didn't think about them when you had Natalie calling round here. So is that what you're saying? And our marriage is over? For good? Don't make up that's been my decision, Kevin. You'd made that decision when you let that woman into our bed. Look, I wasn't deciding anything. I was just being stupid, just being carried away. Yeah? Yeah. Whereas you, you're doing this deliberate. This is just revenge. And they're the ones who are going to suffer. And you don't care. As long as you get revenge, you don't care about anything. Well, if that's what you think about it, I don't know why you want to be married to me anyway. Well, I thought it was really brave of her, you know, because she didn't want to go at all. No, but she did it to save Steve. Yeah, but actually, though, because she didn't seem to know what was happening, whether they were letting him go or not. Oh, they've let him go, yeah. Have they really? Mm-hmm. He's probably done another couple of off licences by now. I'm going to phone her and tell her. And all that's time to what she said. Um, no, not not really. No. Do you really think we'd throw a cell door open and let some lad just walk away just because his bird turns up and says, "Oh no, he cannot have done what you said he'd done because he spent all night with me." <laughs> Why? Well, Give some credit. Why did you let him go then? He's 48 hours rope. We couldn't hold him any longer, not without charging him. What, so it had nothing to do with what, with what Maxine said? No, nothing at all. Alan, you're making this sound like nobody cared whether he had an alibi or not. Well, so you never ever really thought that he'd stolen the whiskey? <laughs> not my case. All right, whoever's case it was. Why did they take him in? and keep him there all that time if he wasn't even a real suspect? I have no idea. <laughs>